We're in the hope and aspiration business. How do you capture hope? I mean, just giving an individual hope you know, maybe that meal that fed them for the day gives them the hope that they can make it through one more day, that they can make it to the next, you know, goal that they've set for themselves. There are attributes that are inherently, I'd say, that inherently define, I think, the success of an individual and their ability to change their circumstances. And those are qualities that you cannot measure through a traditional evaluation. How do you measure confidence? How do you measure increased hope? How do you measure increased understanding of the idea that they have options? You know, so there is these really qualitative variables that no evaluation is going to capture. It's about experiencing and seeing the work firsthand. Counting dollars given away, just like counting number of participants served, is a poor measurement for uh, evaluating success in, in, a, in, in any grant making organization. It's easy to count and it's objective and it's quick to count. So all those things are great, but we need to get beyond just the quick and easy and objective things. We need to sort of wade into the difficult, um, the difficult work that our grantees involve themselves with. And we need to try to understand at a really deep level what outcomes grantees are trying to achieve, how they're, how they're achieving them, and then making sure that they're setting up, setting the right kinds of targets and meeting them. Some foundations fund for such a very short time, a year or 18 months. How much real change can you expect to see during that amount of time? I think we're deluding ourselves if we think that we have really taken on a problem or an issue in a meaningful way in 12 to 18 months. I just don't believe change happens like that that quickly. What are you measuring and why are you measuring it? So a lot of funders want to measure recidivism in our, in our field. You know, did the kid go back to jail? Well, recidivism has less to do with the kid and his activity as it, and more to do with policing strategies and some of, the, some of the tactical kind of things that are happening in our community. So if something, something is news, makes the news here in this community, we get an influx of, of police officers and all kinds of tactical people here and they do sweeps. So kids who otherwise wouldn't get locked up get locked up. That's got nothing to do with a kid. That's got more to do with the strategy. So I think those are some, so what are we measuring? We're not measuring recidivism. That's what people want us to measure, but we were measure, measuring how well connected is the kid to his community? You know, how well connected is this kid to, the, to a particular program and organization? That's what I want to measure because that tells me the kid feels like he belongs, that he's a part of a community, you know, that it has a sense of self-esteem. Um, and so those are harder things though to measure. You know. Let's say that typical evaluation procedures were applied to someone like Dr. Martin Luther King. I mean, can you just see the program officer calling him and saying, Dr. King, I see you spent some time in the Birmingham jail. Well, I'm sorry, that's not a grant supported activity. And, you know, we didn't expect that as your outcome for our grant. I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to fund you. I believe the industry as a whole is moving more towards uh, evaluating outcomes, which is, the, in my mind, a great thing. But, as, uh, but I also believe that some funders have taken it too far, where they're so focused on creating outcomes um, and reporting on outcomes that they, don't, they lose sight of how difficult it is actually to create a lasting outcome. They lose sight of how expensive it can be to create a lasting outcome. And so therefore, there sometimes becomes an over within philanthropy where they're setting unfair expectations on grantees. I want it to be about them. It shouldn't just be about us. Yes, we want to follow up with you. We want to know what happened. But we just don't want it to be an exercise in creative writing or filling in the boxes or checking the boxes just to say you did it. Let's make it meaningful. Let's make it authentic. Let's make it a real conversation about what has worked and what hasn't. And hopefully it will benefit the organization as much, if not more, than it will us. And we do encourage them to be honest and and to tell us you you know we didn't succeed because you know we thought we would uh, be at this point in in our, our grant front funded project but we had delays well we we hired someone who uh, to be the program coordinator but they, they just walked out one day no explanation 
And so now we have to go back and, and, and do the recruitment. And so we're sorry, but you know, we can't produce the numbers that we, we told you we would, which is fine. We, we understand, we want to know because it's going to make us a more effective uh, grant maker. And we can share those stories with others. I have learned that you must understand before you can be understood and that you must know before you can seek to transform. I've also learned that change moves at the speed of trust and the basis of trust is open communication, empathy, flexibility, and understanding.